हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला आई एम शगुन शर्मा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन पॉलिटिकल साइंस इन गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज फॉर गर्ल्स सेक्टर 42 चंडीगढ़ द पेपर इज फॉरेन पॉलिसी ऑफ इंडिया एंड द मॉड्यूल इज इंडिया जापान रिलेशन इंडिया एंड जापान दे हैव experienced a very different kind of relationship with each other the relationship of india and japan has gone through different phases and levels because both are connected through a certain historical background and cultural factors whereas india and japan are economically tied because of japanese investment in indian economy as well as certain infrastructural projects whereas both the countries are coming together to fight common goals of terrorism japan and india are also coming together to fight re, uh, to fight regional violence and to promote regional cooperation and peace through this module an effort is made to analyze and evaluate the india japan relations since its inception their focus is to analyze how japan has been instrumental in the economic development of india besides it is also to evaluate the issues of convergence and divergences in their bilateral ties an effort is made to examine their relations during this cold war era during that period the issues that worked as irritants in their smooth ties are also studied it is further examined that how changes in the global politics during the post cold war era have influenced their bilateral relations the role of external powers particularly of the usa and china on their relations is also analyzed additionally it is probed that how the process of globalization and new regionalism have influenced the economic relationship particularly in the context of emerging regional cooperation in the asia pacific similarly issues of defense and security in the asia pacific region are examined in terms of emerging balance of power situation in the region and role of india and japan in this context it is also visualized that how political understanding between the leadership of both the countries have prevented roadblocks and facilitated cooperation between them besides how issues of oda trade fti and joint ventures between the two states have consolidated their relations is also analyzed on the basis of these analysis an effort is being made to describe the future trajectory of relations between india and japan historical perspective Before the establishment of formal diplomatic ties with Japan in 1952 India has long history of contacts with the former culturally both came into contact with each other through the spread of buddhism in Japan in the 6th century BC intellectuals of both countries came into contact with each other through the writings of Tanchin Okakura and Rabindranath Tagore both the authors were in favor of creation of unity in asia consequently rabindranath tagore also made journey to japan in 1916 1924 and 1929 politically japan's victory over russia in 1905 provided a direct stimulus to the people involved in india's freedom movement later ras bihari bose established india independence league and pan asia league in japan subhash chandra bose also founded his indian national army in singapore with the help of the japanese imperial army in the years immediately following japan's surrender india was the only country to show empathy with japan at the international military tribunal for the far east in tokyo where the allied powers prosecuted 28 japanese wartime leaders radha binod pal of india was the only judge to dissent in that court against the 1948 death penalty however despite these deep rooted historical linkages india japan relations could not remain one of deep friendship rather it faced number of ups and downs contemporary relations 
beginning of present relations between India and Japan can be traced from 1955 when both of them initiated cooperation with each other. However, the relations between them were not always smooth due to changing domestic and global milieu. Ups and downs in their relations can be witnessed due to multifaceted compulsions and interests pursued by both the states. Period of good beginning. During first decade, friendship between India and Japan intensified and ushered in a sort of India boom in Japan. In 1950, allied powers were interested to settle the issue of Far East. India was also keen towards the settlement of this problem and independence of Japan. To settle this problem, San Francisco Peace Treaty was signed in 1951, but India did not sign this treaty as it excluded USSR and China. However, India signed a separate bilateral peace treaty with Japan on 9th June 1951, which marked the beginning of post-war diplomatic relations between the two states. Later, numerous positive initiatives contributed in the building of goodwill between them. India generated its goodwill by renouncing its right to demand war reparations from Japan. As member of Far Eastern Commission, India displayed a sympathetic understanding of Japan's position and consistently argued in favor of ending occupations of allied powers in that area. Further, India steadily helped acceleration of Japan's participation in the international relations. For instance, it supported Japan's membership in bodies like ILO, WHO, E-CAFE, etc. Finally, India supported Japan's entry into the UN in 1956. As a result, Japan also reciprocated these invitations with goodwill towards India. The latter's championship of peace and positive attitude towards Japan was well appreciated by the intellectuals and students. Left-oriented intellectuals also revered Nehru's role during Korean crisis and San Francisco Treaty. Even India's foreign policy of non-alignment was admired by the Japanese. These initiatives brought India and Japan closer to each other. This was reflected in terms of emerging political and economic understanding developed between them during this period. Politically, it resulted into exchange of high-level political visits in each other's country. Indian Vice President S. Radhakrishnan paid his first visit to Japan in 1956. Japan's Prime Ministers Kishi Nobusuke and Ikeda Hayato paid their visits to India in May 1957 and 1961 respectively. These visits were reciprocated by visits of Jawaharlal Nehru in October 1957 and President Rajendra Prasad in 1960. Later, Prince Akihito and Princess Michiko also visited India in November 1960. During this visit they dedicated India International Center New Delhi to India. On 4th February 1958 a commercial agreement was signed between India and Japan. In this agreement both agreed to provide most favored nation status to each other. In 1958 Japan agreed to provide 18 billion yens of loan to India. Thus India became the first to receive such loan from Japan. It was intended to enable India to import capital goods and machinery from Japan. This was followed by four more credits to India. In all as of March 1966, India has received five credits worth yen 118.8 billion. To facilitate the economic ties further, India and Japan removed one major obstacle in the way of smooth trade relations. On 5th February 1960, both countries agreed to avoid double taxation between them. This however do not rule out the absence of differences among them divergent economic development policies pursued by them perhaps was the major factor that impeded the growth of their economic ties while india followed a restriction policy of self reliance by embarking on the import substitution as the main plank 
whereas Japan pursued a policy on free market and export promotion. Besides, Japan was keen to incorporate into an Asian fund for the countries of Southeast Asia. But India's response was not encouraging. Rather, India followed an inward-looking approach towards Southeast Asian states. Cold War situation also influenced their bilateral ties to a great extent. Japan, on the one hand, followed the policy of alliance with the USA, but on the other hand, India followed the policy of non-alignment away from bloc politics. These divergent perceptions created a psychological barrier to the evolution of intimate relations between them. India considered Japan as an ally of the USA, whereas it is fighting against colonialism, imperialism and racialism in Afro-Asia. It appears that if India failed to appreciate Japan's post-war political and economic compulsions to align with the USA, then Japan also failed to understand the aspiration of India to build a new order outside the Cold War framework. That is why, if for India, non-alignment and solidarity among the newly liberated countries of third world was more important than for Japan, close alliance with the USA was indispensable for its economic development and security. Besides, Japan's attitude towards the problems of Goa and Sino-Indian war was not liked by India. Thus, the decade followed after Japan's independence was marked with the enthusiasm of development of good neighborly ties between India and Japan. Even some progress in political and economic terms seems to have been arrived at. But basic difference in terms of their divergent foreign policy approaches continue to work as impediment towards building of warm and friendly ties between the two countries. In the next two decades, political differences or number of areas of regional and global concerns dominated the agenda resulting in divergent foreign policy postures by them. Japan's role during the indo pak War of 1965 was not very positive. It was all the more shocking that despite the conclusion of Tashkent Agreement between India and Pakistan in January 1966, Japan resumed its aid only in 1969, following Indira Gandhi's official visit to Tokyo. Besides, Japan's increased interest in Southeast Asia also created some differences between India and Japan. India-Pakistan War on Bangladesh and conclusion of Indo-Soviet Treaty in 1971 further created a void between India and Japan. On the issue of nuclear proliferation, also both continued to follow opposite policies. Japan signed the NPT in 1970, which India refused to sign due to the discriminatory nature of the treaty. Hence. When India conducted its first nuclear explosion at Pokhran in 1974, Japan criticized this step very vehemently. Soviet and Vietnam's intervention in Afghanistan and Cambodia, respectively in 1979 and 1978, further created misgivings in India-Japan relations. Japan's offer to mediate between India and Pakistan on Kashmir was not liked by India. Thus, political differences between India and Japan continue to remain throughout the decades of 1960s and 1970s. Economic relations, however, continue to improve despite some differences on political front. In 1965, both countries convened a meeting of secretary level to identify their common area of interest. In 1967, both agreed to establish India-Japan Business Cooperation Committee. In 1976, both countries signed an agreement for cooperation in science and technology. After coming off Nakasone Yasuhira as Prime Minister of Japan in 1982, things began to improve. This became evident during Rajiv Gandhi's tenure as Prime Minister. Strengthening of Economic Ties Since the mid-1980s, India and Japan have made efforts to grab new opportunities to synchronize and improve relations. In May 1984, 
Prime Minister Nakasone Yasuhiro paid an official visit to India which was aimed at forging closer understanding between India and Japan. Here, a major landmark and one of the most successful in India, Japan Corporation Venture Maruti Suzuki collaboration was signed. Since then, there has been tremendous improvement in all areas of economic activities between the two countries. During this period, Japan became the largest provider of bilateral development assistance to India. India's share in Japan's total disbursements of ODA rose sharply from 0.1% in 1981 to 14.4% in 1989. Trade between them rose almost eightfold in 20 years from $500 million in 1970 to $4 billion in 1990. Japanese investments stood at $196 million as of March 1991, which represents the third largest direct investments in India after that from the USA and Holland. There has been tremendous increase in the joint ventures between two countries. It grew from 12 in 1979 to 96 in 1988 and cumulative total from 1981 to 1988 reached to 600. Besides, Japan was also instrumental in helping India for Sardar Sarovar Dam, a reservoir to power a hydroelectric plant and feeder for irrigation canals on the Narmada River. In 1987, Japan contributed 2.85 million yen loan for this project. These relations got further boost by the visit of Japanese Prime Minister Kaifer Toshiki in India in 1990. During the financial crisis in India in 1991, Japan announced loan of $300 million and dispersed the same within a week and another $150 million through the Asian Development Bank. Beside $2 billion, short-term credit was extended by Japanese bank in India. However, everything was not fine in their relations as some differences over minor issue continue to exist. Formation of SARC in 1985 seems to have been a window of opportunities for Japan as the latter always preferred the growth of multilateralism. But India was successful in linking critical issues to bilateralism. Some problems regarding the Indians who have been living illegally was also there. But these issues were not very serious irritants. Building Strategic Partnership Post-Cold War era represents a qualitative different type of relations between these states. They are engaged in building of strategic partnership through threefold activities. Enhancing economic cooperation. Now both have developed a fair measure of closeness and understanding in economic sphere. The emerging economic relations can be analyzed in terms of four-fold activities. Investments, trade, official development assistance, and joint ventures. Post-Cold War structural adjustments provided ample opportunities for Japan to make investments in India. Though Japanese investments were there even before 1991, yet it was mostly inadequate, erratic and highly fluctuating. The amount of foreign direct investments approved by Government of India during last one decade reveals the comparative and individual position of Japan in this matter. During 1991-2001, Japan's investment reached at fourth place within an amount of 10674 million rupees. But Japan's investment in other parts of the world are higher as compared to its investments in India. Moreover, the gaps between FDI approved and actually transferred is also very huge. Thus, a long-term investment policy of Japan towards India is yet to be finalized. The geographical factor recession in Japan's economy caution approach of Japanese investors etc might have been the factors contributing to such state of affair. However, the implementation rate of Japanese approval is over 40 percent, 
are much higher than other investors in India. Hence, it is expected that strengthening of India's economic reform and improvement from the economic recession in Japan are likely to enhance the prospects of Japan's FDI to India. Bilateral trade between India and Japan improved a lot during last one decade. India's import and exports have reached from Rs. 3375 crores and Rs. 4071 crores respectively in 1991-92 to Rs. 8416 crores and Rs. 8198 crores respectively in 2001-2. Principal claims of India's imports from Japan are journal machinery, steel, electric goods, professional equipments, transport equipments, etc. India mainly exports iron ore, diamonds, shrimps, textile products, etc. to Japan. Japan comes third in terms of trading partner of India, but its share still is in single digit in terms of percentage of India's total trade. Besides, the trends of trade between the two is not fluctuating but also declining. In a striking contrast of disappointments in FTI and trade, Japan's official development assistance has been very generous since last 1980s. India is the topmost recipient of India's ODA. Since 1991, Japan's assistance to India has increased in a significant way from 2,677 crore rupees to rupees 4,110 crores in 1997-98. A careful analysis of Japanese aid policy reveals that political strategic considerations have been as important as economic ones in the offer of substantial aid. It has been observed that out of the total ODA, more than 95% has been in the form of yen loans, 4% in the form of grants and 1% has been as technical assistance. The major areas of Japan's aid to India have been poverty alleviation, health and Medicare, rural development, natural disasters, population control, AIDS control projects, irrigation, post, transport, power and environment protection. Since the opening up of Indian economy, both are engaging each other through joint ventures. Though the process started in a modest way during 1980s with the conclusion of Maruti Suzuki deal, yet it got momentum only after 1991. Japan's collaborations with Maruti sparked off its joint ventures in the areas of auto components, electronics, TV, etc. Japanese companies have also started to set up wholly owned subsidiaries in India. Securities and financial services have also attracted companies from Japan. Areas of auto, ancillaries, engineering, plastics, petrochemicals, non-conventional energy sources, office machinery, etc. still hold huge potentials for their bilateral cooperation. Tourism can be one of the likely areas of cooperation among the two. Information technology can be another area of cooperation where both can earn tremendous benefits for themselves. Thus, economic compulsions of FTI, trade, ODA and joint venture have brought them more closely to each other. Though there exists certain irritants between them as well, yet their relations are devoid of any serious hurdles between the two. Hence, possibility of sound economic cooperation between India and Japan is not ruled out at present. Developing Strategic Commonalities in the post-Cold War scenario, common strategic perception is emerging between India and Japan in the following areas. Such area of their common security concern between India and Japan has been the free sea lanes in the Indian Ocean. It is the question of lifeline for Japan's 100% import of oil from the Middle East. It is also only available outlet for 88% trade done by India with the outside world. 
India has consistently been a major player of Indian Ocean politics and continued to adhere same status through the establishment of IOC ARC in the post Cold War era. Prior to 1991, Japan had relied on the USA for security of sea lanes of communication in the Indian Ocean. But now it is attracted towards India as the latter is not only an active member of the IOC ARC but also carry lots of influence among the member states of the Indian Ocean. Japan's growing interest in this area is evident from its keenness to get observer status of IOR ARC. Its reliance on India's support has been well admitted recently by Japan's ambassador in New Delhi in his speech at the time of 50th anniversary of India-Japan diplomatic relations. Another area of cooperation is related to their views regarding pan-Asianism. Though despite its best efforts, India could not get its membership yet its expansion of links with the economically dynamic and politically prominent countries of East and Southeast Asia has been crucial. With the introduction of new basic policy on security in March 1995, Japan is enhancing its security interests in Asia Pacific. By joining the ARF, India is also expanding its security ring to include Asia Pacific. Probably for the first time, both are having convergence of interests in the Asia Pacific. Japan's the then foreign minister has been right when he observed that both India and Japan have a special responsibility and a crucial role to play in contributing to the peace and prosperity in Asia. Threat perception from China is another area of security convergence between India and Japan. China's strengthening defense capabilities are affecting them in a different sense, yet common perception to consider it as its enemy is found in both the countries. Expansion in naval and aerial capabilities by China is regarded by Japan as emergence of Chinese hegemony in the East and South China Sea. Development of advanced missile system by China along with legacy of border problem has threatened Indian security in the north. Transfer of missiles and nuclear technologies to Pakistan by China have added fear in India's security planners. Geostrategic and geopolitical location of the newly emerged Central Asian republics have also brought both India and Japan closer to each other. Stability and security problems in this region have been visualized by both countries as long-term implications for their foreign policies. Competitive influenced building activities of the outside power are likely to invite India and Japanese involvements as well. Availability of large quantity of oil and natural gas in the Central Asian republics provides an additional attraction for India and Japan. Despite the checkered developments, immense potential for cooperation regarding disarmament and peace still exists between India and Japan. Both the countries are in favor of establishment of peace and armed free world order. Despite these commonalities, both continue to differ in their perspective on disarmament and proliferation of missiles. Current supporter of America's NMD and TMD missile systems by both also brought them closer in their strategic dealing. At present, both seem to understand each other's security concerns in a better way. Thus, a greater realization of each other's security concerns seem to be emerging between India and Japan in the post-Cold War era. Developing Political Understanding since 1991, Japan is busy in the enhancement of its indigenous defense capabilities. Even with the United States, it is building relationship on the basis of mutual cooperation planning than bilateral defense planning referred to during Cold War period. Japan is also in favor of UN reforms and to get a permanent seat for itself. It has also started playing a role in the resolution of conflicts outside its territories. India, like Japan, is also enhancing its role in the Asia-Pacific during last one decade. 
through the Kleptor proposals, it is engaged with the United States for building military to military cooperation in this region. It is seeking new identity in Asia, not only by developing bilateral ties with the countries of this area, but also evincing interests in participating regional forums like ASEAN and ARF. India, like Japan, considers itself a main contender for the permanent seat in the UN Security Council. The emerging strategic partnership, however, do not rule out the continued difference between India and Japan. Japan's differences with India on the acquisition of nuclear arms and missile proliferation continue to remain there. Japan's role during Kargil War in 1999 was also not liked by India. When Japan put India and Pakistan at par, it was not appreciated in India. However, Japan later on changed its perceptions, but it has created misunderstanding between the two countries. Bringing of the issue of Jammu and Kashmir in nuclear debate was also not liked by India. Despite these differences over the issues like disarmament, nuclear and missile proliferation, Kashmir, Kargil, etc., both adopted common approach on numerous security and economic issues. To conclude the module of India-Japan relation, we can say that both the countries have emerged as strategic partners because both the countries are fighting to achieve regional cooperation and world peace. Both the countries are also interested in mutual economic development in which Japan is largely helping India with loans and aids. Initially, there were few hitches in India-Japan relationships which are now completely gone and both are coming together in a new era of bilateral relationships. Thank you.